Adventure 3, Fun in the Sun. The wayfarers drift between islands aboard the primal refuge cooking rafts, reliving their victory in the Zephyr Wharf boat race before falling asleep on the open ocean. By morning, the vessels reach Morning Shores, the second island in the Broken Chain, and the resort town of Conk Beach. Before leaving, the tribal halfling chef Booba gives Nakoa the recipe for blackened boa that the party feasted upon the previous evening. As the halflings and lizard folk depart, the group contemplates their next move. Before long, the trio is greeted by a goblin in colorful shorts and dark spectacles who introduces themselves as Pickle. They tell the party about a grand amusement park on the beach and the glitzy resort at the top of the hill. The group decides to take in the sights before continuing on their journey. They pass by a crowd of goblin children standing around a watering hole in the sand. Out of nowhere, an octopus bursts out of the water and snatches up the children. Nautilus readies their spear, but Nakoa cautions them to wait. Sure enough, this turns out to be one of the rides in the amusement park. The octopus spins the tiny goblins around before setting them gently back on the sand. As the beast clambers onto the sand, it begins to transform into a bugbear woman. The park director, a loud goblin named Ace, comes over to congratulate the bugbear, named Hemlock, for another successful show. He then introduces himself to the party and welcomes them to the park, pointing out all the entertainment available for paying customers. They take in the various sights surrounding them. A three-story mechanical contraption Ace identifies as a fairy wheel, a goblin storyteller using illusions to bring a mythical tale to life, and cannons along the upper terrace packed with fireworks for a brilliant evening display. They also notice a familiar ship anchored just off the coast, Captain Vance's vessel, the Sea Griffin. Still sour at the captain for abandoning them at Sunfish Cove, the three discuss vandalizing the ship. But Ace warns them of a strong steel ring presence in Conk Beach. He also mentions a rumor that Captain Vance had a meeting with the resort owner, Mr. Bigsy. Eager to come face to face with Vance once more, they set out for the resort. Along the way to the upper terrace, the group is stopped by a steel ring guard by the name of Lux. He claims to recognize the group and immediately starts praising them for their victory in the boat race the previous day. Because of the heavy crowd, Lux offers to escort them directly to the resort entrance. Inside, they meet Fitz, the gnome front desk manager. He turns the party away when he realizes they don't have a meeting with Mr. Bigsy, but is soon called to the kitchen for an emergency. In his absence, the party makes their way to the penthouse and overhears a conversation between Bigsy and Captain Vance about recovering the jade egg from the lizard folk. Mr. Bigsy sends Vance out through some secret exit, but cries out in pain shortly after. The party immediately flees downstairs where they again meet Lux, this time opening the door for another guest. Seeing them come from upstairs, Fitz orders Lux to hold them while he goes to alert Mr. Bigsy of the intrusion. The Steel Ring Guard believes this to be a simple misunderstanding and asks the nervous party to wait for the gnome's return. Fitz rushes back down in record time but claims that Lux's presence is no longer required. Once he leaves, Fitz anxiously explains that the resort owner was struck by a poisoned dart and is near death, but he can't let anyone else know for fear of losing the resort to other high-ranking members of the Eastern Exchange. The trio agrees to help and rushes back upstairs, carrying Fitz to avoid wasting any time. They find the heavyset goblin boss lying on the floor of the lavish open-air apartment gasping for breath. Scourge pulls out his herbalism kit to concoct a remedy, but Fitz remembers that Mr. Bigsy kept a bottle of antitoxin on hand for such emergencies. Attempting to boost its effects slightly before administering it, the tiefling druid adds a handful of herbs to the remedy, then dribbles it into Mr. Bigsy's mouth. He sputters after drinking the orange liquid, but eventually catches his breath and thanks the party for rescuing him. Now aware of the assassination attempt against him, the goblin boss realizes that his betrayals and thefts directed at other Eastern Exchange leaders have put him in danger. He offers to hire the party to cover his meetings for the day so that he can stay out of sight, paying them 100 gold pieces now and another 200 after. They agree, but on one condition. They demand that Mr. Bigsy send word to Captain Vance to call off his hunt for the Jade Egg and the lizard folk who possess it. The goblin hastily consents before heading to his private room and directing the party to Fitz for an itinerary of events for the afternoon. Once again, the group meets with Fitz and learns that Mr. Bigsy has three appointments scheduled. One is with another associate in the Eastern Exchange, the second is with Ace to go over employee business at the park, and the third is with an exclusive guest of the resort. 
They decide to meet with Mr. Biggsy's associate, Captain Joanna Havendish, and learn that she recently lost a crewman and the treasure he carried while he was sailing near the shoals of Spearhead Point. Since the goblin boss owes Captain Havendish a favor, she asks that the group investigate the disappearance and recover the lost treasure, and if possible, learn the fate of her crew member, a sailor by the name of Keel. They agree before departing to their second meeting. Heading down the beach to speak with Ace, they overhear a couple of goblins talking next to one of the cannons. One goblin reluctantly climbs into the cannon when the other insists that this is the only way to get a message to the ship in time. With a loud boom, the cannon launches the first goblin out into the water near the sea griffin. The party continues on. Down on the beach, Ace greets the group once more and learns that they are filling in for Mr. Bigsy. He gives them a basic rundown of the issues for the day, before mentioning that the bugbear druid Hemlock hasn't returned from her break and is due for another performance soon. Nautilus agrees to go check her quarters in the resort basement, while Scourge and Nakoa make preparations to take her place in the next show if she doesn't return on time. Arriving at the resort's employee headquarters, Nautilus enters Hemlock's room, but instead of the stocky goblinoid they met earlier in the day, is a great bear sleeping on the floor. With no one else in sight, Nautilus assumes this is the druid and attempts to wake her. When prodding doesn't work, the Warforge takes some food from their pack and holds it in front of the beast's nose. The tactic works. The bear instinctively opens her mouth to accept the morsel and clamps down on Nautilus's hand, reverting back to her normal form in the process. Hemlock awkwardly looks up, teeth still clamped down on Nautilus's fingers. The Warforged informs the druid that she's late to her next performance, and the two head back to the beach in a rush. But when they return, Hemlock realizes that she accidentally used up her shape-shifting magic in her sleep. Meanwhile, Nakoa and Scourge coordinate their act in case they are needed on stage. The sea elf motions to a swarm of crabs on the beach, getting their aid for later in the performance. When Hemlock informs them that she can't perform, Nakoa and Scourge take center stage and begin hyping up the crowd for their own show. Nakoa uses his magic to fill the air with glittering sparkles before inviting several goblin children as volunteers for the first act. Tossing them high into the air, the sea elf bard quickly casts another spell, allowing the children to float softly to the ground, earning a round of applause from the audience. Scourge then begins their own act. Using his innate tiefling magic, the druid creates a series of sounds and visual effects to draw the crowd's attention. The caw of a crow, a rainbow of colors playing across the tiefling's eyes, and a boom of distant thunder. Finally, Scourge turns and leaps at his sea elf companion, changing into a mountain lion mid-stride while Nakoa catches him in the air. The two perform a series of acrobatic maneuvers while Scourge is in beast form, changing once again as the sea elf tosses him into the air. The druid transforms into a jet black goat as Nakoa catches him by the horns, balancing Scourge straight above him in one hand. The crowd shrieks in delight at the magnificent performance as the swarm of crabs click their claws together on stage behind the magical acrobatic duo. With the show over, Ace and Hemlock thank the group for filling in, but they still have one meeting to go. They return to the resort and hand off Scourge, still in goat form, to Fitz before making their way to the room of Lotus Aberdeen, a high elf and elite guest of the resort. While the snobbish elf was expecting a personal meeting with Mr. Bigsy, he nonetheless relays his request to the party, an exotic seafood dish worthy of his caliber. The party agrees to fulfill his request and heads down to the kitchen, passing a distraught-looking Fitz and a buying Scourge along the way. There they meet a young goblin woman by the name of Annie, assistant to the resort's head chef, the hobgoblin Rhubarb Dupree. Unfortunately, Annie informs the group that Chef Dupree is ill after having some bad oysters while on a date the previous night. Wasting no time, Nakoa puts his cooking skills to the test. Annie looks through some of the chef's recipes, but after hearing of Mr. Aberdeen's special request, she pulls out a second recipe book of exotic delicacies and selects one, Shark Kelp Stew. Nakoa quickly gathers the basic ingredients from the pantry before Nautilus heads to the outdoor meat storage area. There, they find several caged animals and a pool containing two reef sharks. Readying their spear, Nautilus strikes one of the sharks, wounding, but not killing it. When the second shark begins to attack its wounded companion, the Warforged quickly strikes again, impaling the beast and dragging it out of the pool to be chopped up for the stew. With the rest of the ingredients prepared, Nautilus dumps the shark meat into the broth as Nakoa finishes cooking the stew, with Annie watching in anticipation. After a quick taste, the group fills and garnishes a bowl for their finicky guest. The sea elf and warforged head upstairs to deliver the meal. 
Lotus Aberdeen initially turns his nose up at what he considers a simple dish, but is quickly mesmerized by the savory flavor once he tastes it. In thanks, he tips Nakoa two gold pieces, which the sea elf later shares with Annie for her assistance. Having completed all of their meetings in Conk Beach, the two adventurers retrieve Scourge, who reverts back to tiefling form and make their way to the beach. Once again, Nautilus transforms into their rowboat form, and the party sets out for Spearhead Point to search for Captain Havendish's treasure and lost crewmen. As night falls, the group arrives at the rocky beach, but have trouble making their way to shore in the treacherous waters. Nakoa sticks his head beneath the waves to locate a friendly sea creature that could leave them safely to shore, but is nearly bitten by a voracious moray eel in the process. Grabbing the eel by the throat, the sea elf convinces it to aid them. The group follows it to the beach before it swims back to deeper waters. There they discover a cold campfire and a set of footprints in the sand. Following the footprints, they are eventually attacked by a shadowy figure, but quickly realize this is the lost crewman, Keel. After the initial confusion, they inform him that they are here to rescue him and recover the treasure he was transporting. Keel directs them to the jagged rocks where his boat crashed during a storm, the last place he had the chest containing the item. Nakoa and Nautilus venture back into the water while Scourge remains with Keel, bandaging the sailor's wounds as the other two adventurers search the rocks for signs of the wrecked boat. Soon they find it, along with a damaged lockbox in the waters below. Hauling it to the surface, they open the container only to discover it to be full of sand. Their search continues. Dipping below the waves, the two search the seafloor for signs of the lost treasure. Eventually, Nakoa spots a reflection off in the distance. Swimming in that direction, the sea elf spies a small octopus hauling away a golden pirate statuette. Just as Nakoa reaches the octopus, a sleek serpentine figure darts in for the kill. The hungry moray the party first encountered in these waters swims off with the octopus carcass in its jaws as Nakoa recovers the golden statue and returns to shore. With the crewmen safe and the captain's treasure recovered, the party sails back to Conk Beach. They reunite Keel with Captain Havendish and return the pirate statue to her, and receive the captain's gratitude for their success. With all of their tasks complete, they head back up to Mr. Bigsy's room, where the goblin boss rewards them with another 200 gold for holding up their end of the deal. However, the resort owner is the target of another assassination attempt as a second poison dart whistles through the air from the balcony, narrowly missing its target. Looking at the balcony railing, the party spots a black-clad figure disappearing from view. Wasting no time, the party races down the stairs to catch the assassin. Outside, they locate the figure darting through the terraced streets of Conk Beach just as the morning sun begins to rise. Nakoa attempts to slow the assassin down with a thrown dagger, catching the would-be killer in the leg. The chase continues through a crowd of early morning tourists where the party loses their quarry, but a careful search of the group reveals him once more. The black-cloaked goblin dashes away, leaping onto an awning on the terrace below with the party close behind. In a desperate attempt to rid himself of his pursuers, the assassin spins one of the firework cannons around and ignites it, grazing Nautilus with a firework blast before rushing down to the beach. Scourge and Nakoa race after him, the tiefling druid snagging his wounded leg with a vine whip before he can escape into the jungle. With the assassin caught, Mr. Bigsy's suspicions are confirmed. The other Eastern Exchange leaders hired the assassin to kill the goblin boss for his thievery against them. But a deal is struck. Bigsy repays what he owes, or dies. The party sends the assassin away, agreeing to the terms. Returning to Mr. Bigsy, they tell him what they learned. The heavyset goblin agrees to pay back the other Eastern Exchange leaders, hiring the party once again to complete the job. He begins to make preparations, setting the party up in a private room of the resort. There, they finally have time to rest after completing yet another adventure, their first real opportunity to relax since their arrival here in the Broken Chain.